Hello everyone. Welcome to the second episode of my Chairman's Chat series. December is a wonderful time of the year. While looking forward to a better year to come, we should embrace the spirit of peace, love, and most importantly, taking care of our well-being. Therefore, the topic of the day is wellness. No doubt, there has been a lot of uncertainties during the COVID-19 outbreak. It is important not only to care about our physical health, but also to pay attention to our mental health. Being in a chairman position for six months now, it is normal for me to feel worried, stressed and anxious when faced with uncertain situations. Indeed, I need to manage not only my own mental health, but also that of my family and many others. I'm not alone as many executives are facing the same challenges. How do they cope with it? I'm honoured to introduce my special guest from EXA to join me and discuss the importance of well-being. Gordon Watson, EXA Asia-Pacific CEO, and Dr. Po, Managing Director, Health and Employees Benefit of EXA Hong Kong, who will be our moderator. Welcome, Gordon and Dr. Ko. Thank you for joining us today. Since COVID-19, employees' well-being has become a critical business issue. As a people-first company, we have been very mindful of our people's wellness and have been putting efforts into developing a number of wellness programs within the firm, including the Mind Health program supported by EXA since last year. If I may, I would like to kick off with one question for Gordon. In your role as the EXA Asia-Pacific CEO, how have you responded to these challenges professionally and personally? So thanks, Dennis. It's great to be here um, with Deloitte and um, with uh, a Liverpool supporter as well. So uh, well done. Um, you know, COVID, this has been a really challenging year. There is no question. Um, and COVID really has been a catalyst for many things. And in our industry, um, what really has changed, I think, is kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs has really become much more important, where it's health before wealth. And when we look at health, we look at health um, holistically. So first of all, we talk to our customers, um, what do we need to do? Um, what are we doing well? What are the pain points? And we discovered, um, you know, when you look at the cancer product, one of the things that wasn't covered was when cancer recurred. So we listened and we started to provide that. So that's the first in the market. Then, you know, we, we speak about mind health and whatever, and just feeling good. So even in Japan, um, where we start, we do uh, chronic disease cover, we do cancer when people have chemotherapy and we started to give them a choice of wigs, for example, uh, which seems a pretty small, except, but it, it's really important that, that people feel good. The other area that's changed dramatically is telehealth. And when you look at telehealth, uh, McKinsey, for example, told us that uh, last year, 11% um, of people in the US, you know, even knew about telehealth and used it. In the first nine months of this year, that went up to 46%. So a massive increase in telehealth. At the beginning of the year, we had a couple of hundred thousand people who used telehealth. Now we offer it to over 10 million. But the thing that's really, um, for me, has changed dramatically is, is mind health and mental health. And Deloitte, I think, we're at the forefront of you know, purchasing you know, cover and, and services where you can really listen to your employees and really, to say to them, hey, listen, it's okay to be not okay. Um, and making the environment comfortable so people can talk about it. And that's quite unusual because stigma is such a massive thing in mental health that it really um, deters people from seeking treatment. And I think about 74%, a recent survey, I think it was HKU, did 74% who wanted to have men mental health treatment didn't have any treatment at all. And those who did seek treatment in the workplace actually found that um, they had been labeled because they had put their hand up and said, I have mental health issues. So 40% said that was the case. So this is a real, real social issue that we, we need to tackle. And I'm very pleased, you know, Dennis, that Deloitte is doing this. And, you know, obviously we're doing this at AXA too. So it really has been uh, an amazing year, um, full of difficulties, but I think you know, the crisis always presents opportunities. And for me, the big opportunity for us is no one really speaks about mental health, but now today, everyone's talking about it. 
It's like the shadow pandemic. And because people are talking about it, we can do things to today that will be sustainable for the future. So if COVID goes away with all the vaccines or whatever, um, then maybe mental health is not prominent. Um, but if we take the right actions today and seize the day and talk about it and be advocates for it, then we can, we can change many things to really, truly make a difference. And thanks for joining us in that journey. We, uh, we appreciate it. Wow, that is great. I mean, Gordon, that is such dedication to wellness, mind health, and how we work together to improve the lives of the population. So, Dennis, let me ask you, what about you and what about Deloitte? Well, COVID-19 definitely changes our daily life. But looking on the bright side, it gave me an opportunity to spend more precious time with my family, which was rare in the past because of my busy travel schedule and uh, business engagements. At Deloitte, we've been supporting our people, clients and business partners to respond and adjust to the ever-evolving market environments and challenges in order to emerge stronger from the crisis. When facing a challenge, we should always find the, the positives and turn them into opportunities to make the best out of things. Never waste the crisis. So Dennis, has COVID-19 changed the way you do business? Well, it has definitely definitely changed the way that we operate. Well, we cannot travel and uh, we have to rely on technology to do our work and interact with our clients. So it was, it was certain and unexpected at the beginning of the year that the pandemic will last so long. But so far, I would say that we, it's working out and uh, we can get most of the work done through technology, through the use of technology. Wow. Gordon, COVID-19 has really changed the world for everyone. How has XR responded as an employer towards ch the challenges and also the impact on customers? Uh, thanks, Yiman. Uh, for the first one, as an employer, what we did, uh, we have similar to what Deloitte has, and we have 24-7, you know, we have hotlines and we have support, et cetera, for people that can call anytime with uh, mental health issues. Um, the other thing we did is we set up a task force globally for mental health. So um, Karima, uh, who's the global head of HR, and myself, we co-chair that. And we set this up to really understand and really listen to what the issues are. And what we're doing now is we're bringing in training. We're working with uh, Dr. Kathy Pike at Columbia University. And we brought her in to help us train um, our senior people so they understand because lots of people don't really understand how to recognize mental health issues, how to see it in themselves, etc. Um, but also, quite frankly, there's a business opportunity there because, you know, the comorbidity of physical and mental health is very strong. You know, if you have, if you have a chronic disease, you know, you're three times uh, more likely to have a mental health issue. And this is something that the insurance industry is not really addressed. So we see as a is a business opportunity there really to do a lot more. Um, in, in terms of working with our customers, we, we work closely with our customers to give the, bring everything that we can. And you know, what we're doing with our customers, I already mentioned that, mentioned that, but one thing that really has hugely changed is we're working with partners much, much more to develop ecosystems. So in China, we work with Tencent Trusted Doctors, here in Hong Kong, we work with you know, many people with a signature network, people like the Sanatorium Hospital. Um, we work with uh, people uh, like Mannings. And then for telehealth, we have Hello Doctor in Indonesia. We have My Pocket Doctor in uh, the Philippines. And one of the things we've really used is, uh, is one of my favorite women. Uh, she's called Emma. She's our iconic concierge who can direct um, you and the customer to whatever you need, anything to do with help and be health and beyond. So Emma offers uh, 20 services. And the way people made it easier, um, or, or Emma's made this easier. So employee benefits, when you have an outpatient claim, there's only about 5% people claim digitally. Now it's more than half. And there's 10,000 approximately every month new users of Emma. So you can do everything through Emma without actually de dealing with a real human being if you want. But for me, this digital 
um, revolution or fast evolution is really we have to do it with empathy and Emma has to be on brand so it's consistent whether you're dealing with real people, you know, I iconic uh, you know, concierges or banks, etc. You need that same look and feel so you give a positive, consistent experience every time that you deal with AXA. So that has changed a lot um, from what we did in the past to bring that all together, deal digitally. And of course, uh, you know, we can talk about, you know, purpose and society, etc. But I think uh, that kind of answers the question of what we're doing for employees and what we're really focused on for our customers. Wow. Definitely, I think what we are hearing from Gordon and also I think that we can see uh, in the business world is that partnership is now key, ecosystem is now key and digitalization is here to stay. So Dennis, how is it working for you on all these three fronts, both personally and professionally? At Deloitte, we also have many partners and uh, we recognize that the business world has changed. Ch changed. We are part of an e ecosystem. So we form alliances with many, many, uh, many business associations such as Salesforce, SAP, Google, Apple, etc., etc., and and other cloud. So, so we believe that that's the way forward. And in terms of digitalization, this is also one of the main solutions that we offer for our clients. And uh, we've been doing that in Hong Kong and on the mainland for the past past few years, and they've proved to be very, very successful. Wow. Okay, so as we look forward to 2021, now Christmas is just round the corner. You're all very busy, senior leaders, senior chief executive, chairman. How do you look after yourself? I'll ask Dennis first, then I'll ask Gordon. Well, I mean, with uh, COVID-19, I've been able to spend a little bit more time at home these days, and I rediscovered how much a family we can all do together, from drawing pictures, playing games to housework and exploring new things. And uh, well, this job definitely comes with a lot of stress, giving myself time to evaluate and accept the situation can ease some of the anxieties and enables me to gain new perspectives as well as meaningful interactions with my loved ones. We always gain something even in troubled times. Yes, thank you, Dennis. And thank you for championing women. Gordon, what about you? Well, I'm just hugely impressed that Dennis, as a chairman, actually does housework at home, you know. Just a little bit. Wow, I, <laughs> I, I am very impressed, wow. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, for me, when you mentioned family, in, in some ways that was more difficult for me because I have uh, three children and one wife, and uh, my children all live in the US. So I haven't seen my children for almost a year. Oh. So when you're at home, and, and they're actually in the same situation uh, in the US, it's actually even more difficult because you can't really play games. Of course, you know, we've done a couple of things online and we FaceTime all the time, so I, I guess in some ways that was more difficult. Right. Um, but for me and how I look after myself, uh, you know, I clearly, I, I think physical well-being is, is important too. So uh, I try to go out for a walk every morning and quite often I have calls with say the US and I tend to have, when I do my calls with the US, sometimes I can hear people in the background because I'm walking because I right. need, if I don't do that, and I think it's very important that you have to put that in your diary because if you don't put that in your diary, you'll end up doing nothing. Right. So I mean, that's that number one. And, and to relieve the stress, um, you know, the one thing I learned this year is really about breathing, you know, not, just, not maybe as advanced as real meditation, but breathing and how, you know, by breathing, you can reduce the, st the stress and then you know there's different levels of being engaged and all the way up that hierarchy to do that so i'm still a beginner um, but i do think it's important to take time um, to yourself so you can reflect and think otherwise it's a it's a relentless non-ending zoom call and you need to take some time out so that you can think um, and that's really hugely important to me. So physical well-being, making sure that I do that, breathing, and hopefully that helps uh, my mental well-being because everything is holistic and, and, as I said before, really interrelated. And in the past two months, I taught my, my two kids playing mahjong. Maybe I can teach you too. Oh, oh. Play together. All right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I 
I'll I definitely. I can't play my song. Okay. I, I we'll should. Take, yeah. Gordon will take yeah. you up on it, Dennis. Okay, yeah. perfect. Excellent. So, uh, last but not least, let's look forward to 2021. If I could ask each of you to just summarize in two to three words, what are the key tips you will give to Deloitte and audience around the world? What can they do to improve their health and well being for next year? Let's start with Dennis. Well, I would say with the festive season coming up, my tip would be to have some private time to rest physically and mentally. Focus on your health and your loved ones. Great, thank you. Gordon? Well, so for me, I always talk about today has to be the best day in your life. Um, so if you have that mentality and you stop waiting for things, because I find that people are waiting until there's a vaccine, waiting until you know, the US election is over, and waiting you know, until they find a boyfriend or get divorced. They're always waiting for something. So for me, the best day of your life is today. And if you can seize that and really do everything that Dennis spoke about today, rather than stop waiting, of course, it's good to plan, but enjoy and maximize today. Uh, for me, that's the most important. I think that's a perfect finale. Dennis, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Ko and Gordon for your joining me today. Before we say goodbye, I wish you and your family a very happy, healthy and safe holidays ahead. Don't forget to place wellness on top of your agenda for your New Year resolution. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.